Hi guys, David here. In the past year, I received a lot of messages from you asking which telescope you should buy. And also, what are the best choices for equipment for someone who wants to start astro imaging. So even though there are quite a few videos on YouTube about which telescope to buy, I wanted to do a quick and simple one explaining the essentials about selecting your telescope. So let's get to it. The first and simplest, a refractor. This simple telescope is a good starting point. Just attach it to a simple mount, aim and attach a camera. You can even use a webcam for this, mostly capturing planets. But for deep space objects, it's best to use an astronomy designated camera with long exposures. More on camera selection in a different video. To understand which objects can be captured with this telescope, we first need to understand two features of any telescope, aperture and focal length. Aperture is the diameter of the main lens or mirror in a telescope and is responsible for the amount of light gathered and also for the maximum resolution. Focal length is the distance it takes for the light rays to be focused to the smallest possible point and is responsible for the magnification of the telescope. The larger the diameter, the more light the telescope gathers, allowing us to capture dimmer objects. The longer the focal length, the more magnification we get but less light is gathered. So we need to choose our telescope with respect to the targets we want to capture and the right relation between these two values. We can combine both these features into one feature called the f-ratio of the scope, which is just the focal length divided by the diameter. Larger f-values means less light gathered, slower scope. Smaller f-values means more light and faster scope. One more thing we need to know before we start is the different types of astro imaging. There are mainly three types. Planetary imaging, deep sky imaging, and solar imaging. Planetary imaging means capturing objects which are very small or very bright in comparison to deep space objects. This means we want larger diameter for resolution and high focal length for magnification. Deep sky or deep space objects on the other hand have a large angular size which means they are very large in the sky but also extremely dim. The Andromeda galaxy, for example, is about seven times the size of the moon in the sky, but we can hardly see it because it's very far and so very dim. So for that, we probably want shorter focal lengths to get a smaller f-ratio and a faster scope. Solar imaging requires special equipment, which I'll talk about in my next videos. Okay, let's go back to talk about this refractor. So this is an 80mm aperture and 600mm focal length scope which means it's an f7.5. This makes the scope pretty slow, so bright nebulas like the Orion Nebula will be captured easily, but dimmer objects will require long exposures. By the way, I suggest downloading a planetarium software which lets you see what is the magnitude, which essentially means how dim any objects are. I'll put the link in the description. So I guess we can put this aside as a nice to have scope, but not that practical for imaging. Moving on, we have here a 130mm Newtonian reflector and with a focal length of 650mm, which makes it an f5 scope. So faster and with the added diameter size, it has a better resolution than the 80. So it's a good start for planets and also allowing capturing of deep space objects. I should point out, there are a few other things to know about the telescope, which tells us the quality of the optics and so affects the outcome. These are mostly related to optics aberrations such as chromatic aberration and chromatic aberrations but that's a bit more advanced for now and out of the scope of this video so we'll leave that to another time. Moving on, we have here a large refractor. This one is a 152mm diameter and 900mm focal length. This makes this scope sort of the sweet spot allowing capturing of both planets, small and dim deep space objects and also very high resolution images of the moon and the sun. By the way, I use this scope for my solar imaging. And finally, my favorite, an 8 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Right out of the box, this beast is 203 mm diameter and 2032 mm of focal length, which is a pretty slow scope, an F10. But this specific one has also the ability to turn into an ultra fast F2 scope. Using this special lens, which is called a hypostar, the focal length is reduced to a short 425mm, which gathers 25 times more light than the F10, 
and makes this ideal for large and dim deep space objects such as emission nebula, reflection nebula and also galaxies. So that's it for now. I hope this information will help you decide which telescope to buy. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And if you want to support this channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching and until next time, cheers.